Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Feynman Technique. I have a, uh, a really good integral for you today. Um, the answer might not be satisfying for some of you, because I will be expressing this as an infinite sum. There might be some sort of special function representation of the sum, but I'm going to leave it as a sum, because I think it's, it's an interesting sum. It's not something you normally see show up inside of sums. So... Um, I guess the first thing we're going to do is, I've already shown this on the channel, but I want to go over it one more time. So let's take a look at x raised to the i power. Well, that can be expressed as e to the natural log of x to the i. And then we can bring this i outside the natural log from the uh, using the properties of logarithms. So that's e to the i natural log x, and by Euler's formula, that's cosine of natural log x plus i sine natural log x. All right? So that means if we take the imaginary part on both sides, what we have is... Uh, the imaginary part of x to the i is equal to sine of natural log x, which is exactly this. So, what I want to do is rewrite i using that fact. Alright, so, capital I is also equal to the, in, to, uh, the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the i over x squared plus 1 natural log x dx. Okay, well, that's something. All right, so let's get into the Feynman integration part of this. Um, the first step in Feynman integration generally is to create a function of t represented as an integral uh, that closely resembles our original func our original integral. So let's set f of t equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t over x squared plus 1 natural log x dx. Okay, and we will note that our original integral is equal to the imaginary part of our f of t, where t is equal to i. All right, now the next thing we want to do in Feynman integration, typically we would like to find some value for t that makes this integral easy to evaluate. There really isn't one, um, so I found I found another way to kind of make this work. Um, let's note this. Let's evaluate f at the point t is equal to 1. Well, what's that going to give us? That's going to give us the integral from 0 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 natural log x dx. Okay, now let's set it equal to um, whatever we would get if let, let's bring let's bring x to 1 over x. Um, and if you do that, what you'll find is this. You will get the integral, negative integral from 0 to infinity of x to the negative 1 over x squared plus 1 natural log x dx. Well, notice that this thing right here is equal to this thing, and this thing right here is exactly um, our f of, is the negative of f of t evaluated that t is equal to negative 1. So, Basically, what that says is that um, f evaluated at 1 
is equal to negative f at negative 1. And we're going to be able to use that in place of um, finding a convenient value for um, f of uh, for t such that this integral will evaluate nicely. And we'll be able to use that instead. And you'll see how when we get further along in the video. All right. Give me one second. I'm using notes for this video. Okay. So now um, we'll take the next logical step in Feynman integration, which is to take the derivative with respect to t of our f of t um, by taking the partial with respect to t of the integrand and leaving the rest alone. So f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t times natural log x, which will uh, cancel that natural log x, over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. Um, now, I'm not, I've, I've shown how to break this thing up and use Taylor series on this channel many, many times before. Um, so I'm going to jump right to uh, what this uh, function of t can be expressed as in terms of an infinite sum. This can be expressed the following way. This is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 plus t. Plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 minus t. And I'll just do a, a really quick verbal explanation of how I get there. Um, basically what you do is you split this integral up into two separate integrals, one going from 1 uh, from 0 to 1, and the other going from 1 to infinity, and then use the substitute, and then bring x to 1 over x on the one that goes from 1 to infinity. So you'll have two separate integrals, both going from 1, from uh, 0 to 1, and then you can use the Taylor series representation for 1 over x squared plus 1, um, and in a, you know, with, with the addition of this uh, t as an exponent on x um, to, to come up with this sum right here. You know, it, it involves integrating term by term uh, and then putting them back together, but I'm sure if you've watched this channel, um, that's no mystery to you. Okay, great. So now we have a semi-nice representation for f prime of t, but we aren't interested in f prime of t, are we? We are interested in f of t. Okay, so f of t is the antiderivative with respect to t of f prime of t. So f of t is equal to the antiderivative of f prime of t dt which is equal to the antiderivative of these two sums. And then what, what you'll get, um, I'm not going to show the actual integration. That's, that's pretty standard stuff. You, you integrate these term by term, add them together, and then add a constant of integration to get this. This is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1, to the n times the natural log of 2n plus 1 plus t over 2n plus 1 minus t, then plus c. Okay, now that this is where this comes in. This f of 1 is equal to negative f of negative 1. So let's use that. Okay, so what's f of 1? f of 1 
is equal to our f of t evaluated at the point one. So this is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n natural log of, we're evaluating it at one, so this is going to be two n plus two over one minus one is zero, so that's just two n plus c. But that in turn, don't forget, is equal to negative f evaluated at negative one. So that's equal to negative, and now I'm going to introduce a parenthesis here just so we don't mess up a sign. Okay, so that's the negative of our f of t evaluated at the point negative one. Well, uh, that's still going to be the sum n going from zero to infinity of negative one to the n times the natural log of, don't, don't forget we're plugging in negative one now. So this is going to be 2n over 2n plus one minus minus one is plus two, then plus c, close the parentheses. Now, it won't do to close the parentheses below that, before that plus c. Um, think about that for a minute. This, this c is the same thing in both, it's an arbitrary constant, but they have to equal the same thing in both of our equations. So we do actually have to multiply that c by a negative one. Okay, so let me make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. Um, yes, that is correct. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the fraction inside our natural log and introduce a negative sign. So this is a negative and then we'll just flip the numerator and denominator, and we'll end up with this. Okay, now we'll distribute the negative sum. So, parentheses go away, negative and negative is positive, minus C. So, now we're equal, now we have this equality right here this whole equality right here. Notice that this and this are exactly the same thing. So they cancel out. And we're just left with C equaling negative C, which implies that C is equal to zero. Okay. So from this, this whole thing implies that C equals zero. All right. So we can basically just get rid of this C. And let me go ahead and erase a bunch of stuff here. We don't need this anymore. That was only for the purposes of finding C, which we found to be zero. Oh, there was not supposed to be a prime there. I don't know why. I hope that didn't mess anybody up. Okay. So there is our, um, there's our F of T expressed as an infinite sum. Okay, now let's go back up and remember that the value of our original integral is equal to the imaginary part of f when t is equal to i. All right, so Our original integral, the value of it, is equal to the imaginary part of f evaluated at i. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, what's that equal to? Well... If we plug in i for t and then split up our integral using the properties of logarithms, what we'll end up with is this. This is going to be the imaginary part of the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n times the natural log of 2n plus 1 plus i minus the imaginary part of the sum 
as uh, not m n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n natural log of two n plus one minus n. I hope you could follow that. We just use the properties of logarithms to split this up into two separate sums, which I shouldn't have done since it already was like that before. I just thought this was a, a nicer version. Um, but we ended up uh, splitting it up again anyway. But all right, there, this is, this is I. It's the imaginary part of this sum minus the imaginary part of this sum. All right, now, uh, to go further with this, um, I would like to, I'm sure a lot of you probably are already familiar with this, but I'd like to um, show you the general form of the complex exponential of this complex number, a plus b i. And to do that, let's imagine some complex number. This is our imaginary access, and this is our real access. And we'll just put something there. And this is the point a plus b i. All right. And let's just draw a line from there to there. We'll note that the length, the magnitude of this side of the triangle formed is A, and <clears throat> this side is B. All right. So we know that the complex exponential form of any complex number is R times E to the I theta. Okay, r is simply the magnitude of the complex number, the magnitude being the distance away from the origin. And we can see, um, using the Pythagorean theorem, it's, it's pretty easy to see that um, the magnitude of this is going to be the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's our r. Now we have e to the i theta. Now what's theta? Well, theta is that angle right there. And you can see that theta is going to be the inverse tangent of b over a. Because tangent of theta is b over a. Therefore, theta is the inverse tangent of b over a. So tangent inverse b over a. Okay, so there's the general form of any um, complex number represented a plus bi in complex exponential form. That's what it is. Okay, so we're not really interested in that. What we want is the complex exponential form of the natural log of a complex number. Well, that's not that's not that difficult. The natural log of a plus b i is going to be equal to the natural log of this thing, which um, we can use the properties of natural logarithms to just say that this is the natural log of square root a squared plus b squared plus natural log of e to the i tangent inverse b over a. e and natural log cancel out, so that's going to be plus i arctangent b over a. I'll, I'll write that as tangent inverse. Sometimes I use arctangent, sometimes I use tangent inverse. I'll use tangent inverse today of b over okay but furthermore we're not actually interested in only this we're interested in the imaginary part of this so it's pretty clear to see that the imaginary part of any complex number of the natural logarithm of any complex number a plus b i is going to be equal to the imaginary part of this. That's just going to be tangent inverse 
B over A. Okay, now let's apply that to our value for I. Okay. From this, we can see that our first one, let's see, we're still gonna have the imaginary part, but actually we won't we won't do that because the imaginary part is going to get rid of um, the imaginary part, it's just gonna it's just gonna transform into this. So let's see. I'll start a new line here. So I is equal to the imaginary part of this sum right here. Well, let's see. We're still gonna get sum going from zero to infinity, and we're still gonna have this negative one to the n. But now this is the thing we're taking the imaginary part of. So, since we're taking the imaginary part of it, we can get rid of that imaginary notation right there. And the imaginary part of the natural logarithm of a plus b i is equal to tangent inverse b over a. Well, what's our... All right, so let's first write down tangent inverse. Now, what's our b? Our b is the, is the thing attached to the imaginary unit. So in our case, it's just 1. And what's our a? Well, our a is 2n plus 1. So that takes care of this part. Now, we're going to have minus, using the same, uh, the same thing we did on the last sum, minus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, and we'll still have negative 1 to the n. Uh, but now taking the imaginary part of natural log 2n plus 1 minus i, this is going to be tangent inverse of, well, our b in this case is negative 1. Tangent inverse of negative 1 over 2n plus 1. Now, tangent inverse um, is an odd function. So it, it Basically, we can bring this negative side outside the tangent inverse and then bring it outside the sum to make this a plus right there. All right, and now you'll notice that these things are exactly the same. So our final answer is just 2 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times the inverse tangent of 1 over 2n plus 1. And that is, that is actually the answer. Um, if you plug the integral into Wolfram Alpha, and you plug this sum into Wolfram Alpha, you get the same thing. Um, so I know some of this might not have been um, perfectly rigorous, but this is a math trick channel, um, and it worked out in the end. So if uh, I, I invite nitpicking, um, I, I'm a, a learner myself. Um, so if any of you have any criticism uh, in regards to my thought process or reasoning, go ahead and leave a comment because I'd be interested to see where I went wrong. I know I didn't get the wrong answer. Um, those the, the answer I got um, that it is correct, that will sum to the exact value of, um, of our integral. But anyway, guys, uh, that's it. That is the answer, and I really hope you enjoyed that. And we will see you next time.